Welcome back to the Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by the one and only Gary Spain, and we're here to discuss whether if the Euros are postponed by a year uh, to Euro 2021, where it looks um, there's obviously going to be a meeting on Tuesday uh, regarding UEFA and what's going to happen. But it is a case, obviously, there's all the confusion around. Nick McCarthy's contract, Stephen Kenny's contract, and just kind of all that type of stuff. So, in your opinion, what would you like to see happen? Um, obviously, you want to see the, the Euros happen sooner rather than later. Um, and I want us to qualify, obviously, as well. And, and I mean, and they're also talking about a possibility of a, a winter Euros, December 2020 Euros. I don't know how that's going to work. Where did you hear that? I, I've been reading that of some of the international, some, reading some of this on Twitter, and it's... Uh, some of the international press, which may be, may be better informed, I don't know, I mean, some of the English writing from things like Tuto Sport in Italy and the German ones. So there has been some talk of a December Euros. There are also talk about, obviously, of June 2021. Um, I haven't seen any talk of when the playoffs is going to happen, mm. which I think is, has to influence the decision on Maker Stephen. Yeah, well, see, see if it is a case if they just decide to scrap the playoffs. Does that mean that Mick should be the one to... Um, I suppose stay on till we play in the in the Euros, and then let Stephen come in after, or does Stephen come in if 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 the decision is that we're Euro twenty twenty one, should Stephen be the manager? What way? Does yeah, well, I mean, we we probably obviously don't know the exact wording of the contract. Yeah. Has Mick got a contract until July twenty twenty, or has Mick got a contract till the end of the Euros? Um. Stephen, my understanding is Stephen has a contract that starts in August or September. That's what I think. This year. Yeah. And Stephen's. So possibly they both have a contract to be the national team manager if the Euros gets postponed. They can't exactly afford a payoff, can they? Well, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I mean, the other thing is it, it may depend on when the playoffs are going to happen. I think we've decided they're not going to happen in March this month. No, no. Um, Potentially, they could happen in June, but I don't think so. Uh, potentially, they may not happen until March 2021. If there's a December Euros, I don't know how they can have a playoff. I mean, there, there was even talk of having a 20-team Euros, but I don't, I don't think that's possible, and it's not going to happen. I, I would imagine even at that stage, they may have to say, right, we'll just draw lots or somehow to get the four teams. Um, I don't know. I mean, we're really in uncharted territory here. Um, what do we do? I mean, is the Nations League going to go? Uh, is the Champions League going to go? So, I mean, coming back to it, it is going to be an awkward one for the FEI. I mean, do they let Mick go? Um, has Mick managed his last game for us? I think that would be very unfair. I think he's done probably as well as expected. I know people are saying, yeah, we should have qualified, but and we didn't qualify. But I thought, we'd, I thought Mick had a reasonable year last year. I know you may not agree on that, but... Um, well, the, the only thing is, if, if you're, if what are you comparing it to? Are you comparing mix tenure to Martin O'Neill's last year in charge, or 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 before that? Like what? Because Martin O'Neill, in his credit, you know, there's big games there that we won. To his credit, um, there's games there. I thought Mick could have gone and won, like the, like the Georgia away game, bringing on Connolly so late. I thought that was a big mistake. And that, that was a mistake. And I, I think if, if Aaron Connolly had come on ten or fifteen minutes earlier, we probably would have won it. Yeah. Because he certainly made a difference when he came on. I just felt like it's uh, t like the thing that annoyed me the most was the constant playing players that were out of form. Now, you know, I don't mind the games where we we won by the odd goal. I don't because they're wins. I don't I don't yeah. care how we win once we win, right? But the constant players like people like McLean, um, you know, Robbie Brady, Callum Robinson, they weren't really doing anything like a club level or anything like that. And when they were brought in. They didn't really do anything um, for for the national team. I didn't think so anyway. I mean, Clean had a couple of little moments here and there at the moment against Switzerland. But overall, in the campaign, as a left winger that's supposed to be providing assists and stuff like that. I know the system doesn't help. Me. Well, ironically, he's actually found form in the last few months that's under right. Michael O'Neill. So he's well worth and his now, place he, now. now he yeah, I mean, the team, I, he'd be there yeah, on merit. I, I agree, but it's... Uh, I, I suppose Mick did go with the tried and trusted, but I, I don't think the year was that bad. I mean, okay, what do you compare it? It was definitely a lot better than 2018. Mm. I, I, I think, okay, we finished behind Den We only finished ahead of George and Gibraltar, and we finished behind Denmark and Switzerland, Switzerland which probably, it's as the seeding would have suggested. I mean, we were one goal. Had we scored against Denmark at the end, we were through. 
Um, I know we didn't beat any of them. We only lost one game as well. It's... I, I don't know. I mean, I think ultimately the playoffs would have defined, I think, mixed rain. Yeah. I think that's a fair comment. If we'd qualified, then it would have been deemed as a success. Possibly if we went out in penalties in a final or something like that, because I still think we'll see penalty shootouts. Um, at least one of the games. At least one of the games. Yeah. Um, any sort of qualification I take and would be fantastic. Um, he may not get the chance now. I mean, if his contract is actually up in July, and plus the financial issues and everything with the FEI, I, I think they may not have a choice but to give the job to Stephen Kenny. It may not be exactly what they'd want to do. Yeah, and it also kind of comes into the fact that, you, you know, we mentioned on previous shows that there, there's going to be that um, June camp that probably won't happen now. I, I can't see that happening. And that would yeah. have been probably a thing for Stephen Kenny to work with the, with the new players then if, the, if, 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 say, if we'd if lost the playoffs the playoff, and yeah. the Euros had go on like they had. Oh, well, yeah, if we had lost it, sorry. Um, yeah. That would have been a way for Stephen to, to kind of come in and assess who he had and who he, who he was kind of okay. going to let go or, or what way, or if he thought maybe some of the younger players could come in and do the job for him. But that it, it's going to be, in a way, like I'm not saying... Mick done, you know, I'd probably rate the, the campaign a six out of ten, pushing six and a half. Yeah, and, and, and as I said, I think the playoffs would have told a lot. Yeah. I mean, for 2016, we, we finished third in our group as well and came through via, via playoff. And that obviously it went on to have a hugely successful, well, what I consider successful yours in France, getting to the last 16 yeah, but and actually this is what I'm saying, taking the lead against the horse, you know. But that's the thing is, like, we actually we done well in those games, whereas when I look at, again, you said we took the lead against teams, whereas under Mick, it was every time we went to goal down was when we started to attack and actually looked like a good side against Denmark okay. when we went at them away from home, uh, Alan Judge. That's the on. one we could have won actually in Copenhagen. We, yeah, we chained off you with the goal. Yeah, then, yeah. then then we went to goal down uh, at home, right away with the goal the last game and then Matt Doherty. Again, another thing, the reluctance yeah. to play Matt Doherty. Um, he could. He, I thought he could have put him in front of James Comey. I think well, he, he, he tried. Yeah, he maybe it didn't. It definitely didn't work in Gibraltar. But that was. But nothing worked. Nothing Gibraltar. worked in Gibraltar. I mean, it was just a horrible day. The wind was horrendous. Look, I'm not trying to defend the performance. We got the three points, and that's yeah. that's all that but matters saying, really, you know. But, 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 it, but he yeah. knocked it on the head very quick after that. Yeah. He didn't have it. A, a right winger. Then you know when Robbie Robbie Brady, sorry, uh, was was fit, he was trying to shoehorn him in. Then he was trying to shoehorn other people into the team. And I just was like, you know, someone like Josh Cullen, I think maybe deserves a bit more of a run now. Uh, or James McCarthy. Well, that's going to be something that would okay. have been a case because he was going to be announcing a squad on Friday. Yeah. So we don't. I mean, that's obviously gone as well. So, so we, don't we don't know, know. who he actually could yeah. have had in the squad as well. So I don't think it's a fair comment to it. It's, I don't look at it as in mixed rain is fully over in terms of the Euro campaign to get us there because I think I think you have to extend that to the Euro playoffs and see how we do in that and then you could rate it as a whole as a whole thing. That's why the six and a half right now could go up to a seven. But seven and a half. If if the playoffs and I, I don't know when the playoffs are going to be. If the playoffs are March and and they're March twenty twenty one a year away, is Mick going to take the campaign for the Nations League and then go into the March playoffs? Because I, the way I saw it and the decision to give Mick the job for Euro twenty twenty and Stephen, I think, is seen as more of a long term prospect. Was it was so important with the home Euros, the only home finals probably in anyone's lifetime. Just get there and give Mick the experienced manager. The, you go with the experienced players and just find a way to qualify. And I, my thinking, and I, I think what the FAI were thinking was, because uh, it is an unusual setup, is Stephen is a man for the future, but he has to be given time to work with his work with his players, work with the young players. He's done a fantastic job with the under twenty ones. There's no doubt about that. I was expecting we'd see a lot of those under twenty ones, a totally new squad or. A, a lot of new players in the squad. Not maybe not a totally new squad, but a, a significantly changed squad, squad for the transition. Nations League. Some transition for the Nations League. That qualifying for Qatar would not be the be all and end all. I think qualifying for a World Cup is going to be very very difficult. Now there are thirteen places for Europe. There'll be ten group winners and three coming out of twelve in playoffs. I think even reaching those playoffs would be an achievement. 
Um, so Stephen's focus, I think, would have been on Euro 2024 in Germany. But if he doesn't get to take charge, and I, I imagine he'd be very, very unhappy if he didn't get to take charge on Pill. I mean, are you talking about halfway through the World Cup campaign? Then I don't know. And actually, I don't, I don't, I don't know when the dates are for these players. Yeah, but it's just a mess. Yeah. But say Stephen is to get the job, right? So we're going to fast forward here, you know, hypothetically thinking, um, Stephen gets the job. I think regardless of what happens, he's going to, in some fans' eyes, not in mine. I, I'd be willing to give him time, but. Not everybody's going to give him time, and it's going to be dependent on results. I think a lot of people will be... If he doesn't start well and loses a couple of games, fans will be on his back straight away. Whereas I think with Mick, if he loses a couple of games, he's gone. So it's going to be difficult either way, I think. Yeah, it's, um, it is it is going to be difficult. and it, it, Maybe our fans... I, I would hope our fans would be patient. Yeah, well, if, Steven, if Stephen's bringing through young players, like the way Wales did, like Wales had to wait a while to get the success that they have now. Yeah. We're going to have to do a similar type of mould in, in that aspect. But I do think it's, it is time maybe to start bringing in some younger players. We, again, go back to not knowing who Mick would have had in the squad. He could have had Jason Malone and Jason Knight in the squad the other day. We don't know, but I doubt I it. Don't, I, I, yeah, we don't know, but I, I don't think so. I agree with you. But he could, have had, he, yeah. he could have had Dara O'Shea as cover for right back for Matt Doherty because Seamus Coleman's injured. or Possibly, yeah. Kissed, yeah. Who knows? But, who knows, yeah. But it's one of those things. Again, and, and another thing that annoy me and it's coming back to me here now is the fact that like playing people like like Kevin Long just in the squad for the sake of having him not playing sitting on a Premier League bench week in week out I'd love to know how many minutes he's actually played this, this season and Mick would always say oh players have to be playing but he'd happily have him in yeah, I know he plays yeah. the friendlies and stuff like that yeah well I mean Kieran Clark would I suppose would have been the first backup but no he was injured well he, I know, he, I know he, would have been, he would have been out of this squad but he would have been let's say going back yeah. I mean he would have been the first backup for central defence ahead of Kevin Long. Um, yeah, but the, the way the campaign started was Richie Kyo, Shane Duffy, John Egan, and Kevin yeah, well, Long, and Clark was out of the picture. Yeah, he was, and he came back into the picture in, in recent months. Yeah, and obviously, obviously he's injured now. Richie yeah. Kyo too, so he's gone. Yeah, back. okay. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think that comes under Stephen, the likes of Darrow Shea will get more time, Yeah, without a doubt. Well, at, at centre back. Yeah, at centre back, or possibly he's playing right back for West Brom. Yeah, so yeah, I think he's, he's, so, he's so more he may, natural yeah. as a as a centre back. He is a centre back. If, yeah. if, if they're gonna go forward from now on, they're gonna have to have Matt Doherty playing in that right foot position. Uh, yeah, I think he's one I of the best so. players in Europe, yeah. especially in that position. Yeah, I mean he's probably the best right back in the Premier League anyway. Uh, possibly Trent Alexander Arnold. Yeah. Okay, we can have the Liverpool fans have. And I know it was one Bissaka at Man United, right? We can, you can have that argument, but. Um, yeah, I mean, Matt Doherty to me seems a no-brainer anyway. Mm. And right by the way, back, I'm not yeah. saying that Seamus Coleman's bad in any way, shape or form. I'm just saying that as someone who's he's one of the best players in Europe right now is Matt Doherty. So I think on four... Uh, I, I'd like to see Seamus possibly tried in the back three with, 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 with two wing backs. That, yeah. I, with I, Matt Doherty and Ender Stevens, you know. I'd be interested to see. It would obviously play to some people's strengths, not to all the players' strengths, but I mean, why not play the likes of Ender Stevens, who's just signed a new deal with Sheffield United as well, been rewarded. Uh, they both actually got new deals uh, this season because yeah. they've both been excellent. Again, you speak about players in their position, um, Ender Stevens. Is there many better than him? Well, uh, yeah. Well, he would. He would have well. been out. He would have been out of these playoffs as I well. Know, yeah. So it would have been a huge loss. I, I, I don't think there's even an argument for the, the left back position. Ah, I, yeah, you know, yeah. But I'm just, but I'm yeah. just saying okay. that maybe if you're, if you're changing, you know, if Stephen comes in, does he, does he play back three with wing backs? What way? It'll be, it will be interesting. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what he does. You know, what way he brings in? Because if you kind of look. Coming up through the ranks at left back, there's not too many options other than maybe Daryl Lee at Dundalk as an under 21 player coming up. Uh, okay. Derek Williams, I suppose. Can Derek play. Williams is is a good good option at left back. He's yeah. played. He's played. Um, he's not young, you know. He's not, okay. He's not going to bomb up the line type of thing. It'd be like playing yeah. Dara O'Shea at right full type of thing. You know, it's, okay. he's better as a centre back. I but he's more. He's a better physique for a centre half, okay. half. I think anyway. Yeah. But there's it's, it, there's so much to talk about regarding. What, do you play? Mick, or sorry, do you have Mick or do you have Stephen? And it's it's such an interesting contrast because again, I go back to if Stephen's going to be bringing true players, are people going to be giving Stephen the time to work with? Because he's going to have to come in and work with, you know, uh, the likes of uh, Jeff Hendrick, John yeah, Egan, these types of and players. And he, he is going he today. is going to change our style of football as well. I, I I think he's definitely going to play. 
because I mean, you, I think people saw the way Dundalk played in the Europa League and the way the under 21s are playing. And, and, and maybe I'll go back to your Wales point actually, because that's an interesting one. The Welsh sides, now they're not actually as successful at underage as we are, and they, they don't tend to qualify for 17s or 19s as we have qualified and done really well. But they do play the same style of football, and that's one thing Ryan Giggs has instilled in them developing the young players, all playing the same way, all coming through. Some of that he worked on after we knocked them out of the World Cup. He brought a squad of players to China and spent about 10 days working with them. And after a, a bit of a slow start, and they had a couple of bad defeats a year ago in, in Hungary and Croatia, but they did, they did pull it around. They did qualify for the Euros. And I mean, people saw what they did to us in the Nations League, home and away. They just absolutely battered us in Cardiff. I know you were there as well. And uh, well, that I was. I don't go to it, I guess. <laughs> anyway. So, but that was that was a that four one defeat. Well, twenty eighteen was a horrible write off. But I, I think we saw how good, no matter how bad we are, how good Wales were as well. So I I, I think Stevens his plan I imagine is to do something like that. But you, you, as well as that guy, sorry to cut you off, but you look at players that he's given chances to have gone gone on and done really well. Harry Wilson's started to really progress in his career now from getting his chance with Wales. He was brought yeah. into the to the national setup. David Brooks at Bournemouth, he's a fantastic player yeah. as well. He's I mean, injured I, at the moment, but he's a player. I suppose in a way Mick's tried yeah. to do that. Like, yeah. he, 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 people can't forget that he did give Aaron Connolly his debut. He gave Troy Parrott his debut, albeit not competitively, but he did, and he had him okay. in the spot for that. So he did try to bring in some young players. So I'm not going to be all... You know, anti Mick because I think there's some aspects he's doing really well. Yeah, I, I think Mick's focus was very much on the here and now, and I think Stevens is going to have to be with an eye to the future. Yeah. So I think it, I mean the plan would have been, and I, I've said this, and I still believe this. The 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 aim for Stephen would be to qualify for Germany 2024, whereas Mick had one job, and that was get us to the Euro Euro 2020, which is now what is it? We don't know. Yeah. But um, and I. And a lot will depend on when is our next international football match. Yeah. And it's possible that may not be till September. Which would be horrendous. It would be absolutely horrendous. And yeah. who do we think and who do we want the manager to be then? I don't yeah. know. I suppose yeah. we leave that to the audience. Um, let us know who you'd like to see in charge. If it is to be postponed, we don't know what's going to happen yet. We won't know till Tuesday, but we thought we'd discuss it anyway and kind of raise up a couple of points and have a bit of a debate. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, Gary, I suppose I'll, I'll talk to you soon, yeah? Cheers. <laughs>